Well, a very Merry Christmas to all of you. And a good new year, hopefully. We have passed December 21st, 2012. And like I stated before, as the media pumped it out, that this would be apocalyptic, end of the world, whatever. It never was, from everything that I've learned, to be about the end of the world. It mainly centered around the transformation from one age to another. It mainly centers around a kind of an uplifting of consciousness, so to speak, is what they talked mainly about. But I like to hone in on the part of where they think about the return of their God. Well, I've not heard or seen the return of their God. So evil which I consider their God, as they were cannibalistic and sacrificed thousands and thousands of the humans, their own, in homage to their fake evil God. I call them out, where are you at? Where are they? I guess evil lies, and they lied to, to the Mayans. So, I would say that those gods that they worshipped, the fallen angels, impersonating gods, I'd say they can't squat to take a pee without it being in the real gods' own timeline. Pardon my French on that expression. Well, let's look at the return of their supreme being here. Their message, the prophecy of the return of a supreme teacher or being, speaks of Quetzalcoatl, known to the Mayans as Kukulkan. Growing belief, he will not take the form of an actual return or reincarnation, but of people themselves taking on the character and attributes of the supreme being through their own spiritual evolution to the point of overcoming the duality of the subject-object relationship. Prophecy that resonates with all religions, supposedly, and we'll go into the commentary. Mayan mythology has, to a great extent, pivoted around Quetzalcoatl, the plumed or feathered serpent, one of the principal gods of Mesoamerican religion whom the Maya called Kukulkan. His cult and its influence was not confined to the Toltec Maya and his emblem, the Feathered Serpent, is found throughout Mexico. Much of the Mesoamerican religion, one of the principal Mayan prophecies, was focused on the belief that Copacan would return. This belief was so deeply embedded that in November 1519, Montezuma II, ruler of the Aztecs, virtually surrendered to Cortes, believing him to be either an emissary of Quetzalcoatl or the god himself newly incarnated. Alun Joyaktin suggests that Kukulkan, the feathered serpent god, also known as Quetzalcoatl, is to the New World what Christ is to Europe, the center of religious cosmology and the preeminent symbol of the civilized nations of Mesoamerica. Are they surprising to banish missionaries like the 17th century father Evidendo? Rationalized the prophecy of the coming Kukulkan as the Spanish conquest and the Maya's conversion to Christianity. However, behind this missionary's Christianization of the prophecies lies a genuine, very ancient narrative tradition, native tradition. The American anthropologist and linguist Alfred Tozer explained that these prophecies were doubtless adapted by the Spanish to proselytizing purposes, but they were fundamentally to have been native accounts of the return of Kukulkan, one of the culture heroes of the Maya corresponding to the Quetzalcoatl of the Mexicans. It is therefore beyond question that the prophecies of the Jaguar priest are embedded in ancient tradition and predate Christian influence. Quetzalcoatl is frequently represented as a feathered or plumed serpent, and because of the serpent symbolism, the prophecies of the return of Quetzalcoatl, Kukulkan, have important association with the esoteric parallel of Hinduism's secret knowledge of Kotalini, Kundalini, and the seven chakras, the body centers of energy, 
Although tradition before the tradition era, my elders and priests traveled to India taking their knowledge with them, the influence remains conjectural. Even so, it's remarkable that the Maya taught about the seven power centers of the human body, by which means the energy of the cosmos was assimilated and expressed. It could be a striking example of parallel development. In Hindu teaching, Kundalini represents a serpent-like potential curled at the base of the spine. Specific techniques of yoga and meditation can awaken this serpent, whose energy rises through the seven chakras. Training in this technique under the necessary guidance of a guru or teacher is one of the many paths to liberation. In Mayan mythology, the source of this energy lies in the earth, from where it begins to move, first to the base of the spine, then through each of the seven chakras. This vital link between earth and body is one of the central themes of the prophecies that speak of the urgent need of humanity to recover its intimate relationship with nature. Thus far, we have a prophecy that speaks of the return of a god which, understood literally or otherwise, will liberate earthbound energies and revitalize our consciousness in the life of the spirit. Beyond this, the prophecy carries a message of broader significance, pointing to the supreme being, that is, to the Mayan monotheism of one true god, Hunab Ku. Most of the major world religions hold on to an expectation of the coming of the supreme being, teacher or savior. Jews focus on the messianic hope, Christians on the second coming of Christ, Islam on the return of Jesus the prophet, and the Mahdi. Hinduism holds to traditions such as that of Kalki, Buddhism to a concept of the Maitreya, the Loving One, the fifth and last of the five earthly Buddhas. Robert Borsir's account of the belief in an imminent return of a type of teacher or savior among native and aboriginal people suggests that their beliefs are similar to the Christian expectation of the second coming of Jesus. Each of these traditions preserving as they do the myth of a returning savior or leader, also have in common the assurance that the return will be linked to a time when humanity and the earth are at risk. Well, we're still turning. We're still here. And the best I can tell everyone, is the ultimate guide to where are you at and where are you going lies in scripture of the Christian Bible when you look around you see the things in the earth that are happening the way they are when you see the heavens and the cosmos and the actions in them when you see the sun doing the crazy things now and then that it, it is doing. When you see all the evil that men do, when you see the starvation and the hunger of people around the world and in your own country and your neighbors maybe in your own town, when you see disease, you see all these things, it's what he told you you know you're in a time, you know you're in a window. It's not specific and it doesn't give a date. But the most central point on this planet, the most important point on this planet, is Israel. If you keep your eye on Israel and the happenings in Israel, along with the way everything else is going, the changes in the earth, the floods, the earthquakes, the hurricanes, you name it, and the wars and the anti-sentiment against Israel and the reactions that they're going to have sooner or later and all the things happening around them, how they're taking out the leaders of the countries around them and replacing them with actually worse leaders. You can see what's going on in Egypt. It isn't better than Mubarak the people thought it would be. But hey, they got hosed, right? So now they're raising Cain over there. Power to them. I'm glad that they're going against the regime that's been installed. Whether they can take it out 
doubtful. Don't think they can. So they're going to be left with what they got. Syria and Assad. I told you he won't go. They're going to have to kill him. I don't believe there's any diplomatic option in a country that's been in rule by the family for 40 years that he's going to give it up and say, hey, sure, I'll take asylum over here, just don't kill me. I think he'll fight to the end. And then again, when you think about it, we talked about putting a scare out there that he was going to use chemical weapons on his people. You have to remember his people are some of the rebels. Not all of the rebels are his people. They've got mercenaries in there from other countries. They've got all different mixtures of people in that rebel force. And it's a proxy war. You know, you've got Russia and China back in Syria. You've got the United States and others back in the rebels. So, you know, where do you think uh, the help's coming from? So you've, it's like a chess game in the background of countries that are actually pushing these two factions buttons. Well, they got their minds set on it's not if he goes, it's when he goes. So, it's going to keep going. And like I say, I think he's going to have to be dead before it's, it's all over. They want that country changed over. And they want someone even worse than him in there to take the control. And I'd say King Abdullah, your little country of Jordan, you're probably next on the checklist. I think they saved the I think they saved the Saudis for later on down the line before they trade her on them. But I think Abdullah you got a little stuff going down there that's not making the papers. I hear about it now and then. There's some little discontent going on, but not to the point of boiling over yet. You gotta stir the pot a little more to get it boiled up a little more. So we have made it. This date is no longer active. There is some energy coming, supposedly, bombarding our planet for the next couple of days. It hasn't seemed to be making anything act up. To me, it doesn't seem to be having any effect on people. You know, been out in crowds, stores, and whatnot. Seems to be normal. So who knows what that energy is actually doing, if anything. I think Hoagland was taking some readings down in Mexico. And he's going to do a show on what, what type of uh, levels of the readings that he found. You know, what, what did the, he thinks that means. He gave a little tidbit of it, but he's going to make a show on it, <clears throat> put it on the radio, which we'll pick it up later on, on YouTube. So, I'm sitting on the same thing. We're economically messed up, or moralistically messed up. I don't see anything in the world getting better. 2013 is like they said we're in a change in a new age and for Antichrist to come and show himself and start being active the table's got to be set and all the pieces have to be in place and they're not yet so we will begin to continue into the new year 2013 the fiscal cliff what a joke Either way they go, the United States economy is ruined. They'll never pay off $16 trillion. Don't believe that lie. They make the deal. We all get hosed on taxes. They don't make the deal. We're still going to get hosed on taxes. That's the way the game goes. So, wish all of you the best on the holidays. Try to enjoy yourself. Tell your family you love them. Spend as much time as you can with them.